moving the St. Jude's uh, moving the St. Jude's party indoors wasn't even that big of a deal because you got a huge area here too. Right, we cleaned huge. out the whole living room and and uh, everybody's you know, and the extras are upstairs above in the room above the garage, which well, you, you could play. Like a- <laughs> oh, hello, you can play bas- <laughs> you can play basketball up there. No, you can play basketball up there. I mean, it's a huge area. You have to, what do you f- think? I have to f- ask you a question. What? I can throw a party. Yeah, you can throw a party. Well, I don't know if they know that. Throwing a party with cameras. Anybody who's been to her St. Jude's event knows that Martha can throw a good party. But she's doing it this time in her house. And with the extras, you're putting on a show. So you've got to provide food and you've got to provide, you know, the the drinks and keep everybody warm and happy. And she's able to do that in in the room above her garage. Well. Which sounds strange. But if you were up there... Like I said, you could play basketball up there. Well, I want people to be happy. Right. And everyone's up there watching the Giants. Everyone's up there watching the Giants. We're going to get them back from lunch. But the one thing I learned from working on the short film with the producer that I worked with, she said, if you make your crew, you feed them well, and you make right. them keep them warm, make them oh, happy. What a crew you have. Know, so, okay, wonderful. talk about this. You have the best of all the worlds here working on your show. You've got people from All My Children and ABC. How did you, what, what, did it just take a couple of phone calls? What was it? How did you get them all here? It's Martha. Well, Burton, no, right? no, no. How do you think? No, that's yeah. not, no, but a lot of people don't know, we don't know each other. There's a lot of people I don't have relationships with, but sometimes you have relationships with the people that have relationships. So it's like the someone else. Six degrees of Martha Byrne. But no, it's, <laughs> it's a trust thing, you know, it's a trust. It's, somebody says, trust me, she'll feed you well. Trust right. me, she'll yeah, take right. care right. of you, you know. I'm not going to screw I mean, anybody over. I want people of, to have fun and enjoy themselves. I guess we can encapsulate that in the, the one that everyone trusts you. Yes. A lot and she inspires. She, she inspires people to, um, you know, you, you inspire sort of loyalty and friendship because you sort of are, you know, such a good friend. And, oh, you know, you. I think you just make people want to do anything for you because we know that you would do anything for other oh, people. That's, that's, and that's just, that's, true. that's you in a nutshell. Thank you. <laughs> And there you have it. Aww. Wow. Like I said, I said yeah, oh, uh, wonderful. <laughs> I started out crying, and I leave crying. Oh, for, uh, for all of us oh, at We Love Michael. Soaps. Thank you. Thank you very much. Support. It's coming soon. Gotham. Oh, Roger, that looks like so much fun. So th- what was the set like? Well, it, um, it was a pretty big crew. I mean, considering... You know, they shot over the weekend. They, they shot four episodes. Wow. Uh, it was actually a pretty big crew. Um, what I found was it was a, kind of more like an independent film. It was sort of like I shot my film. It was kind of like we saw Imaginary Bitches, uh, except they had a couple of cameras, uh, and they did multiple takes of every scene, whereas we've been hearing on soaps uh, and the sets I visited, they do one taken out unless there's right. some disaster. So, um, so you're saying like they actually like had rehearsals and... Blocked out scenes. <laughs> yeah, That's they blocked crazy. the scenes. They did multiple takes of scenes. I was hearing like take five, take six, and I was like, "What's going on?" Um, but it, the parts I saw were, looked really good. I'm really excited for the show to debut. Your interview looked like it was in somebody's living room. Yes, it was Martha Burns' living room, wow. which was also um, cleared out, and um, it, it was a scene of a party. I guess I can say that. Okay. Now, now, how did this visiting this set compare to like different sets that you visited before in the past? Um, well, you know, when I, like when I went to As the World Turns, everything was so fast. It was like unless somebody really flubbed, unless something fell on their heads or something, they kind of did the scene and moved on. Uh, and plus, it was like uh, in the studio, three walled sets very small, three-walled permanent sets, whereas this was kind of like a real place. And, um, and, but the atmosphere is much more light. I mean, it's not that people don't have fun on soap sets, because I know they do, but this was definitely much more light and fun, and I think people were really excited about the product. They were really excited about the writing and Martha's script, mm-hmm. and um, you know, everybody was really behind it. It wasn't, it wasn't really so much about money or a job, because who knows where the money's going to come from for some of these indie projects. Sure. Uh, but everybody seemed to really have a love for each other and a love for the project. So that was really nice. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, it's good to know that there's a lot of people out there that are really trying to preserve the quality of soap. Um, because in my opinion, especially this last week, I want to bring up something that's really been bothering me. Um, the way, especially, the, okay, so women on soaps, I think in the last 15 years, the, the way women have been treated has gotten worse and worse and worse. But I think especially this past week, 
um, thinking about the way Barbara has been treated on As the World Turns, and especially on General Hospital, which has never been, well, never in the last 10 years, been um, something that has been kind to women. But the way they've, they've degraded the character of Claudia to, uh, you know, trying to blackmail Dominic and having sex with her and the way she's, she's pleading for it and degrading herself. I'm kind of disgusted. I mean, this is supposed to be a medium where they're appealing to younger women and they want them to watch. I don't get it. What's the appeal? Uh, I don't know either. You know, and it's something that I'm you know, frequently bringing up in the magazine when I talk about women's issues and how this is a, a genre geared towards women that really does women no favors. I mean, women are constantly portrayed as being manipulative, desperate, pathetic, you know, having to beg men for sex or be, you know, handled or controlled. And, you know, the character of Claudia is a great example of where, you know, General Hospital went wrong, you know, writing a strong woman. You know, I think conceptually, you know, you could see Claudia as this strong mafia princess who could go toe-to-toe with Jason and Sonny and really just... But that, you know, the character became just yet another one of Sonny's disposable girlfriends. And... And then, of course, when it you know became clear that that wasn't necessarily working, pairing her romantically with Sunny, you know, automatically it's like she's sacrificed on the villainous altar, and it becomes all the more pathetic and desperate. And, and it's a shame because I think there was so much potential there. Um, and and there's nothing wrong with being a, a capable female villain. I mean, I loved Faith, uh, Cynthia Preston's character from a few years back who was an awesome, deadly black widow. I just, I just loved that character. But again, she could not be shown as being better than or stronger than Jason and Sonny. Right. And ultimately, you know, was sacrificed for that. Right. And I think Claudia, you know, fell victim to the same thing. And there's always an instance on soaps, not just General Hospital, to have the man be the victor. You know, the man has to win every scene, every love story, every, you know, and, and, and that's just, you know, that's it's very sad. And... And then with Barbara, um, you know, it's kind of different. There's a, there was a, a, a sort of, you know, fond, but yet also, you know, I can see where you're coming from in terms of being offensive, mocking of her sexuality as an older woman. Right. And, you know, again, like, it's just that, you know, what, what's wrong with it? Why can't she be having hot sex with Henry at her age? I mean, what's right. the, was there really a need to have both Katie and Vienna kind of be like, really, you? Colleen, Colleen Zink Pinter is totally hot, and we've seen her up close and personal. We interviewed her at the Emmy. We interviewed her. We interviewed her at the Broadway flea market. She's looking better and better. And I think you know a young love, young male suitor for Barbara would be fine, except they're playing it for jokes. They're kind of making fun of it, and you know I, I think maybe the actors are having fun, and I think Colleen's having, oh, having it's fun. fun. But as a fan, I, I'm kind of offended by it too, in terms of I. I, I beg the show to write for Barbara and I really want to see Barbara but then when I get Barbara I'm not happy with what they do with her so it's kind well, it's of that cougar trend right now like everyone is jumping on it and, and kind of relishing it and unfortunately the term cougar itself to me is derogatory like to, to, to imply that a woman over a certain age is like this prowling tigress or some kind of cat Predatory, going after a young male. Well, I think I it's, mean, it's all it's, context, and I think our yeah. culture is really ambivalent about this term and about embracing women's sexuality of all ages, Absolutely. but especially women over 40. Um, you know, I think it's all context. If you're using cougar as a way to, you know, make a, a woman a metaphor of an animal, then that can be very insulting and degrading. If you're using it as a term of empowerment to say, here's a woman who's in control and knows how to get what she wants and isn't afraid to go after it, then I think that's a very, very powerful image. It very much kind of just depends on the source. Yeah. I think the way Barbara's being portrayed on As the World Turns is not one of empowerment. She knows Henry's not interested in her. She knows he's into the money. She's sleeping with him anyway. And this is a character that we've been watching for over 30 years, and, and I just think it's really degrading to her and to her history. I mean, if anything, you know, you know, Henry, you know, needs to be pleading for her, for her attention, you know. But instead, it's sort of like she's playing this game with him, and she's acknowledged. I mean, much to Colleen Singh Pinter's credit, she's lent dignity and integrity to this, and she even said to Lisa, "I, I know he's not into me, but come on, this is Barbara Ryan. Why are not all the men in this town okay, running after into her?" her. I mean, come on. I mean, it's something that I frequently, whenever you know, I talk to the gang over at B and B. Like, I love Jackie and Owen, but it, to some extent, Jackie is also portrayed as needy, as as you know, demanding Owen's attention and and being insecure about it. Mm -hmm. But to me, Jackie's fabulous. Yeah. I mean, Leslie and Dan's awesome people, yeah. and just like Colleen Pinter. And why do we have to see you know, like, you know, them begging for it?